How do you earn and give respect? I am inviting you into a little uh, coaching lab that I've got going with some beautiful f uh, university faculty and staff at WSU Tech. And the question was posed, how do you give and earn respect? And so I actually wanna ask you all first to come up with some content here. And so I wanna um, focus on earn first and do a popcorn of how do you not how does one, but how do you earn respect? And then we'll switch gears to how do you give respect? But right now, thinking about how you actually earn respect, and I'm gonna even narrow the scope down to like in the last week or two, or thinking maybe at the beginning of your semester, how do you earn respect? And if everybody can come up with one response, and if we can go just uh, kind of real quick, uh, Joyce, Janet, Crystal Strap, in that order, what is one way that you earn respect? I do what I say I'm gonna do. I'd be honest and upfront with the students from the very first day that what I'm gonna tell them and what, what we're gonna do. Um, be there for people even when they don't ask you to. So ask, hey, do you need a hand? What can I do to support you? Seeing other people as an extension of myself. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, these are, okay, video's done. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you earn respect. Now let's go to how do you give respect? Uh, no, truly, I'll, I'll add to that for me. Um, and this comes from the reason that, uh, the reason that um, Will and I, when we wrote Ask Powerful Questions, the first chapter has nothing to do with questions. It is because if you want to build relationships of trust, if you want to earn respect, I believe the foundation of that is getting really crystal clear about your intention. Because when you're clear about your intent, manipulation cannot exist. Because when you're clear about your intent and you stretch it to include the needs of what other people care about, uh, manipulation cannot exist in that space because the other person has the choice to say, yes, I wanna play the same game that you're playing, or no, I don't wanna play the same game. In which case, you're not pushing or cajoling or forcing them um, into anything. Now. That gets a little bit more complex when we're at work and people have to do things. <laughs> um, and so there's, I recognize that adds complexity. Let me, because you, I think, are wiser than me, um, let's flip. How do you give respect? So in the last week or two, what is one thing you've done to actually give respect? And we'll go Joyce Janet, Crystal Strap. Okay, I call the students by their names, their preferred names, actually. I uh, listen to them, whether it's by email, I respond immediately, whether it's by email or them coming up to my desk. I mean, I even have my computer, my, my email on my phone so they can get a hold of me pretty much from nine, from 6 a.m. till 9 p.m. every day. Um, I like to, to try to involve those people, people with the strengths that I don't have in things that I'm doing um, to show that they are valued and I respect their expertise. I don't particularly work directly with students, but in my world, my day to day, I try to do like a, a need survey. Like if I know a stranger that I'm interested in creating a relationship and working with somebody, I try to ask questions because what I deem as respectful may not be their type of respect. So I want to know what people's boundaries are so I never cross them. And that, that to me is respectful because mm. I've traveled, I'm, I'm from overseas, I understand cultural context, I, I, and I don't want to be disrespectful when I don't know I'm being disrespectful. So asking questions and being just a safe place for that, whatever answer they may give you and respecting their, their whatever they want, their boundaries is the way I would look at it, but that's away from academics, so. Y'all should be involved with educating the planet or something. Y'all are smart. <laughs> I don't know that I can add anything uh, deep to that. I'll give you a quick professional and personal example of how I uh, give respect, especially in the context of me getting up and talking to a group of people. Um, one of the ways that I give respect is with the phrase, hey, I'm coming in here with an immense sense of humility that you are the experts of your own world. Nobody knows your life, your context, your students, your staff, your fill in the blank better than you do. And so I'm gonna try to spend zero minutes pretending that I know your life better than you and all of our time creating an experience that will allow you to steal some really practical, useful ideas to apply into your own context. What I'm doing with that language, and you can make your own language to it, is putting them on the stage. I'm actually putting them on the pedestal and saying, you're the smart one here. I'm just here to facilitate a process that you can pull from and add value to yourself. The 
uh, personal example that I'll offer is I've got a little two and a half year old auto. We should queue up auto. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, he is adorable. So this is auto. This is actually this is a year and a half ago or so. Um, but I give respect to auto and I'm not always very good at this. And so I'm giving this advice into the camera back to myself. Um, I give respect to Otto by when I show up from work, getting totally down on his level and being fully present. When I am the best dad, this is locked away somewhere. It's so tempting, it's so easy to like scroll behind a pillow for me or like answer one last text or something while I'm with him and it splits my attention. And he knows it, he's so smart, right? And I think from the very young age, we're smart enough to know if somebody's present with us or not. And I think it's one of the most respectful things you can do no matter how busy you are, no matter how much you got going on, to spend the seconds or minutes or hours that you have with somebody only with them. And that is a couple ideas on how you earn and give respect. Have an awesome day.